Well, the Yankees are doing well, but I, I hate to burst your bubble. Welcome to Section 420, Talking Yankees. Well, Gio Carl Stan makes his yearly visit to the IL, so we'll get into the injury and how, how long is expected to be out. And with that in mind, introduce the newest Yankee, who's actually a former Met, J.D. Davis, and what kind of what his role is going to be with this team. And as we all know, Garrett Cole back for the Yankees, ready with a couple of starts on his belt, so we'll kind of peek in on that. And last but not least, we know, you know, Brian Cashman has been a bit of a merry-go-round with the bullpen. You know, it's new faces in, new faces out. Kind of tweaks it every week and almost every month, so maybe you haven't been paying attention lately, and you kind of watch the games like, hey, who's this guy? When did we get this guy? So I'll at least get you updated on, I guess, the recent new faces now. They may be gone in two weeks, but nevertheless, I'll introduce them in kind of the background there. So a lot of good stuff for this episode, so make sure, if you're watching right now, whether on TV or on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the Section 420 Talking Yankees show here on YouTube, or if you're watching on TV, go get it on YouTube. And of course, an audio podcast version of this show, Section 420. 20 talking Yankees. So as much as you'd like to see me, I wouldn't mind seeing myself. It would like to do that. But you know, it's time the time to do that. But you maybe want to hear me, get my takes, get my reactions to things. We've got a whole season still uh, half a season left ahead of us. We got the all-star break and all that good stuff. So make sure wherever you get your favorite podcast, section 420 talking Yankees, subscribe there as well. Get all of it. So like I said, you're watching at some point in the season, you know Gio Carl Stanton's going to go to the IL. Remember last season actually went quite early, and it was almost a similar situation. It was running the bases. I think it's where he tweaked like the Achilles heel or something, and he was like, gone for like half the year. Well, this was probably not as serious, but still as as before, it's running the bases. It was in that second game against the Atlanta Braves, the only game the Yankees won in that series. They're running the bases, pulled a hammy. Uh, so now initially they put him on the 10-day IL, but of course afterwards they said he could probably be up, up to four weeks there. So I don't know, they might switch him to a different version, but initially it was 10-day, but again, looks like he could be out as long as four weeks there. And you know you know what Stan did in the offseason. He lost some weight. He, you know, he wanted to trim down a little bit, be a little bit more athletic. And I think it has paid off for him. I mean, the Yankees haven't really been you know throwing him in the outfield much at, at, at only at, at at all really so you know you, you heard the Yankees might want to try to do that but the reason you don't want to do it is because of this we just see with this guy every time he runs around a little bit he pulls a hammy he pulls a something with his Achilles something goes wrong there and again it's a danger and that's why again this happened again with his hamstring there so hamstring again it's it's not you know, it's not great, but again, it could have been it could have been worse. Let's just put it that way. So uh, probably will be up to four weeks, and it is kind of a shame because he is putting the work. He has lost some weight, and look, he's had a, a pretty good season for himself. Uh, up to 18 home runs, the batting average around 230, 240, which normally says not really good, but for him, that's actually pretty good. good last year, remember last year, he ended up under 200 there. So you know, it's kind of a bum break because he, he's been doing well. And as I mentioned in the previous episode, uh, he was at least at that point second in All Star voting for the DH position there. So other fans saw that as well. So again, this might hamper that you know in terms of you know now if he has his injury he's not going to be putting up numbers this is now is this going to cost him an all-star visit maybe uh, but again, that's just why you just kind of hold your breath a little bit when he's running the bases and why I don't want really him in the outfield at all because, again, something like that could always crop up with him. He just has, you know, bad luck. He's just a big guy. I know Judge is a big guy too, but whatever. Judge just seems a little more athletic than Stanton, who's more statuesque. So uh, now, immediately right after, they called up Oswald, Oswald Peraza, who you may recall, uh, you know, battling his way back from the, the short shoulder, which he had um, in, during spring training. Uh, but you can kind of see the Yankees' faith in him because basically, as soon as he was up for a cup of coffee, the Yankees made a move for J.D. Davis and, and sent Peraza right back down. And Peraza, you know, people call him like a 4A player. You know, he's he's good in, he's good in AAA, but hasn't quite really hit it here in the majors there. Uh, but again, I think if the Yankees had a little bit more faith in him, maybe they would, you know, they would have made the move for J.D. Davis. But then you hear Boone saying that, no, they, they were working on that in a while. Is this a coincidence that Stanton went down and he came up there? Whoever you want to believe, it's kind of hard to say. But with Peraza, I think, you know, it's really his stock has really gone down. Um, I kind of done some rants on him earlier. I kind of put him in the Eduard, you know, Eduardo Nunez slash Miguel Andahar category where good raw talent, you know, could put up some numbers maybe in AAA, but this seems for whatever reason is never going to get a shot with this team. And look, some of it's his fault. I mean, you know, have the Yankees given him a long look? Really? No, but he's had some chances up here in the past two, three seasons, and he's not exactly torn the cover off the ball. Um, you know, so, you know, he, I mean, yeah, so the Yankees haven't given him time to play in time, but he also the time he's been given here hasn't exactly been that impressive. I mean, decent defensively, okay, uh, but, you know, he's also had his issues. And even last season when uh, Donaldson struggled out of the gate there, they gave him the third base job, and he hurt his foot, and you never really heard from him for the rest of the season there. So I don't know what's going to happen with Peraza there, but I think if you just did, did, 
just showed you the faith in him is that as soon as you know Santa went down, he was up, he'd be up. I figured maybe they could say, all right, you know what? Maybe we'll juggle him around a little. Let's get him some at bats like that. No, they kind of pull the trigger on the J.D. Davis uh, trade there and then and can send Peraz right down packing there. So, he, I mean, he was barely probably uh, not even up here long enough to use the bathroom. You know, that's how quick he, up and down he was there. And I just think the Yankee organization is really now low on Peraz there and his stock has really dropped down. So, uh, we'll see what happens there. Now, if it's a situation where, you know, and we'll discuss this later in the episode, if they let Glabo walk after the season, then maybe Peraz will get a shot there at second base. But that remains to be seen there. Uh, but nevertheless, as I do, do mention, the Yankees do trade and get J.D. Davis to form a Met. Now, this was with the Oakland A's. Now, at the time, he was designated for assignment with them. Uh, maybe because they put him, maybe because they did that because they were, you know, maybe at that time negotiating with Cashman just on the deal there finalized. But nevertheless, the Yankees get J.D. Davis from the A's and cash consideration. So they get a little cash back. And for him, they just traded uh, infield prospect Jordan uh, Groshan. So now you look at J.D. Davis' numbers this season. Now, you remember the Mets a couple of years ago, he was actually pretty good there. I mean, he, he was raising some eyebrows, but, you know, he's kind of been up and down a little bit. Uh, but again, we'll look at his numbers, at least for this season. Now, he only played in 39 games, so limited activity. Uh, only hitting 236, not that impressive there, and just four home runs with five RBIs. So still has a little pop in the bat, but again, hasn't really played a ton. Uh, but if you want to look back at that, um, again, when he was with the Mets, his best season with them in 2019, played 140 games, so it's pretty durable. Uh, hit 307, 22 home runs, 57 RBIs, and OPS of 895 there. Again, so he was pretty good with the Mets, came up a little bit. Obviously, kind of kind of faulted with them, and they eventually uh, ended up with the Giants. Now, last season, the Giants, he was pretty, still pretty darn good. Played 144 games, so again, rather durable, but batting average kind of low, 248, uh, 18 home runs, then still a little pop in the bat, 69 RBIs, and an OPS, a little little less than his 2019 good season with the Mets, and that was uh, hitting, uh, that was an OPS of 7 uh, 38. Now he's only 31 years old, so you know it's not like he carries some like old veteran like a Josh Donaldson type deal. Again, he's still kind of in the prime of his career there, and it's a good deal for the Yankees. He's only signed through this year, and then after that, you know, bomb by all, he could go to free agency. So you're stuck with the guy for another three years. So good deal for the Yankees, and he's quite flexible. He can play first base, he can play third base, uh, third base, he can play a little outfield. Um, and this is good for the Yankees because, as we know, the Yankees, you know, struggling with, at third base right now. DJ LeMayo, I mean, been mentioned in the past couple episodes, really been faltering. I mean, he's really hitting rock bottom. This is getting to a point where they're going to have to, like, Aaron Hicks him or Joey Gallo him or something or Donaldson him. Uh, he's just falling into that category. He's just not producing at all. At least now with J.D. Davis, you, get, you know, he can play the third base. And I know he'll probably split some time there with Oswaldo Cabrera. Also, even at first base as well. I mean, you know, I know the Yankees bought a Ben Rice. And he's a young kid. You figure, you know, he has a lot of... Uh, you know, he, he has some fresh legs, but again, you could spell maybe Rice at first base a little bit, or even in the outfield there, you could shuffle some guys around, you know, and we know Verdugo's got the left field job, and maybe, again, maybe if the, the Yankees are facing a tough lefty, they could give Verdugo the day, day off and put J.D. Davis out there, so that gives, it gives them a little flexibility in that regard, and also, I guess, one of the silver linings of Stanton being down, where he was kind of hogging up all the at-bats in the DH position, well, if he's going to keep that, if that's open now for the Yankees, the Yankees could rest some guys like Aaron, like Aaron uh, Judd, for example, or even Juan Soto, uh, just get them off their feet a little bit because now we're getting into the you know the hot months of summer there and you get some brutal especially in New York over the past two weeks has some brutal heat here so at least any silver lining of you know Stanton being on the IL for a while at least it opens up the DJ uh, the DH spot and that would be for uh, you know just mainly I would say just Judge and Soto just get them off their feet a little bit because uh, they've been playing us almost every game there um, uh, in the outfield and as mentioned before with DJ LeMayu I mean at least for at this moment right now I mean hitting 176. Still waiting for the first home run since he's been back there. I'm again showing no power, um, you know. And even at, you know, at, at the very least, I mean, you know, at least you hope for his, his defense at least you know be the reason to put him in there. But even that he's been faltering a little bit there as well. So again, this is going to be a tough conversation the Yankees are going to have to have regarding D, DJ Lemayu. I mean, you like the guy, you know. You know like Donaldson was unlikable and Hicks was up and down a little bit, but DJ was like one of the guys over the past five years of this team, one of the kind of the, you know one of the five you would say cornerstones. And for him, this kind of is really right now a complete blank at the plate there. Um, this is going to be a tough issue. I, I think you know, that's probably part of the reason they might have been kicking the tires on J.D. Davis even before Stanton went down as a, a, a solution. We know, you know John Birdie's also floating around out there, but again, uh, he's on the I.L. With, with dealing with that calf injury he got in, in San Diego. And look at him himself. I mean, he's been on the I.L. twice for the Yankees, uh, and he's 34 years old. He's not exactly a spring chicken himself there. So you can understand why they probably wanted to bring in, uh, bring in Davis here. Um, and then at some point they're gonna have to address the DJ LeMayo situation because he's basically right now just a name. He's just a name on the on the 
roster right now. And, you know, he's taking plays hard from other people. And if he's not producing, they're going to have to do something about that. So it's going to be tricky, though, because he does have two more years left on his contract. So it's just not one of those situations where it's hard to, like, just, you know, do what they do with Aaron Hicks. They say, all right, you know, you got a year left in your deal, but you're just so bad. Go home. We'll pay you. May have to do that with DJ LeMay. I don't know. They may at least maybe try their best, try to get him through this season. And then maybe next year when he only has one year left on his deal, maybe that's when you could kind of give him the boot there. So it just looks like at this point, DJ LeMay cannot hit major league pitching right now. So uh, that's just something they're going to have to address. But at least in the, in the short term, they got J.D. Davis up here. Again, still young, 31 years old. And again, he could play a couple of positions. And again, if DJ's not producing, at least he could ride the bench there and he could put J.D. Da- Davis in the starting lineup. Now, of course, this would have been a great time to stand on the aisle for, for the, us, us to see Jason Dominguez, but as you mentioned in the previous episode, now originally he was put on the aisle for only seven days with a strained oblique. It was on a check swing, and fig- at the time you figure, ah, it's no big deal, just being a little precautious, okay, you know, whatever, no that. Well, now the update on that, actually, it's worse than we even thought. Turns out now he's going to be out up to eight weeks, so kind of a major blow for the Yankees, because if you think about it, you know, we were expecting him to maybe be up, you know, sometime before, um, you know, September, at least to be, so he could qualify for the postseason roster. And, and of course, you know, you just want to see him up here with Judge and Soto and in that lineup, and we know the excitement he could bring. Again, the Yankees were look, weren't looking to rush him here, and it wasn't exactly a big need. Again, the Yankees were pretty much stacked up in terms of the outfield, and we got Verdugo and left. I don't think he's going to push him out the door. I know Jason Domingo is probably overall better hitter than, than Verdugo, but still, overall, you're not going to have Verdugo in hand and push him out at the door like that. So, again, it was like the Yankees have rushed Domingo here but again with Stan out this has been a good opportunity for him to at least get some bats here and again uh, put himself in the mix but now of course now he's out kind of up to almost um, eight weeks and that almost maybe takes a possibility that maybe we don't even see him this season in, in, in pinstripes up here you know let's say in the show I mean we saw him last year fine but that was kind of out of desperation again the Yankee offense was putrid he came up he gave us an exciting week and a half before you know having to go uh, needing Tom and John surgery so you know we know the Yankees retooled they got a little bit better of an offense of course with Soto so the Yankees weren't dying need to have Dominguez here, but of course, it would have been nice to see him. And we figured at, just at some point we were going to see him, but now you got to throw out the possibility maybe we don't see him. And maybe the Yankees just look at the season as that, look, he's only 21, 20, 22 years old. Um, you know, obviously we know the Yankees have him control for the next many years to come there. So no need to rush him there. And, you know, if they figure maybe they just don't want to bring him up and there's really no room. So you got to, again, look at the possibility that maybe we don't even see him at all this season, which would be kind of, you know, annoying because we were kind of expecting him, you know. Uh, so we knew we were going to get cold. Okay, fine. We got Cole, and we figured at some point we're going to get Dominguez. Now, turns out maybe we don't get Dominguez, or you know, this oblique injury could be maybe worse than even eight weeks. Maybe just maybe they, maybe they end up shutting him down for the rest of the year. Just like, oh, right, you know what? We don't want to mess with him. If he's a little hurt with this, then fine, shut him down for the year. So that could also possibly happen. So it's kind of a big deal. No one's really talking about it. And and again, I don't think the Yankees even think about trading him. But let's just say you did want to inclu- include him in some sort of blockbuster trade. Well, no one's going to want to trade for him if he has a bad oblique right now. Even as, even as great as he. Could could be and you know as great as he projected to be uh, you know, now it hurts your chances to use them as possibly getting in some big trade that the Yankees may want to be working on deadly. Well, now that's off the table with him. So, you know, it's kind of big news for the Yankees. I hope at some point maybe he can get back in time. It would look, to, it look great to see him in this lineup somehow, some way. Um, you know, that means that someone somewhere else is going to probably lose their job. That's a possibility, but also, hey, look, it's part of the game. Look, if you're not hit, you're not producing, or if someone's just, you know, doing what much better than you, then you guess you're on the outs there. So I don't know how that will work out, but maybe the Yankees don't have to have that conversation if Dominguez is not going to be a part of the mix here in 2024. Now, you've also heard some fans also clamoring, oh, bring up uh, Spencer Jones, which, you know, he gave us some excitement there in spring training, uh, but he's not exactly doing super, you know, terrific. I mean, right now, uh, only hitting 242 uh, with six home runs. So, Doing okay, but he's not exactly like ripping the cover off the ball. And right now, I don't, you know, from me here with the Yankee, the, the, um, front office, they don't want to mess with him. They don't push him too much. They want to just gradually, again, they, they call him a lot of left-handed Aaron Judge. We know he's a big, tall guy. He can hit the ball a ton. But, but also, you don't want to stun his growth. You don't want to bring him up here too early if you feel he's not ready. I don't think that's the move to make anyway. I mean, if anything, you can understand with Dominguez because, I mean, he's hitting like, you know, 380. And, of course, we saw what he did here in the Major League uniform. You know what he could do here. So I don't think that'd be an issue. Spencer Jones, still a young kid. and hasn't been up here yet. So I don't even bother messing with that. So I, I, you know, I think that's the right move. Keep, keep him uh, in the Miners there. But Dominguez uh, being gone and possibly not in the mix in 2024, that could happen. Now we were waiting on 
a whole first half of the season for Garrett Cole. And finally, yes, he is back in the Yankee uniform making starts for the Yankees. So that's the good news there. So we'll look at his first couple of starts. Again, one was decent against Baltimore. And then one was a real clunker at City Field there. I mean, that's definitely a start to forget. Uh, but again, it doesn't seem any sort of injury-related or any, any sort of discomfort like that. Uh, according to him, he, you know, he just flat out stunk. But nevertheless, we'll you know, look at the numbers now. This was first the Baltimore game at home. Uh, it was the uh, second game in that series. Four innings pitch, which you kind of you know expect him, and you, you don't think he can get five six innings at there his first start of the year. So again, we kind of thought that was going to be they scheduled him for sixty five pitches. He only threw sixty two, but again, you didn't think they were going to push him that far. I really figured thought they would maybe go eighty pitches on him, but I guess again for the first start in a major league uniform against you know Baltimore, I guess again take what you get there. So four innings there, um, only gave it three hits, two earned runs. Just one uh, walk, but you like to see five strikeouts. Uh, so, so, you know, you see the stuff is there now. The second start against the Mets at City Field was an absolute disaster dud. Again, if that would have been his first season, I think fans would be panicking there. So, uh, but nevertheless, uh, there, same thing. Only went f uh, four innings, uh, but gave up seven hits, six runs, four walks. And kind of, go, well, two things that kind of uh, worrisome about that. No strikeouts at all and gave up four home runs. And City Field is not exactly a hitter's park there. Uh, so for him to give up four home runs there, so it's kind of a, uh, you know, you got to really hit a bomb to get a, a ball out over the wall there in City Field there. Um, and his velocity overall is low. Now, he said that was by design. Uh, again, usually he's dialing up 97, 98. Uh, some of the home runs he gave up there was only on 93, 94. So, I mean, still a good fastball, but not Cole standard there. Uh, and remember two seasons ago when Cole was struggling, uh, you know, both with the fastball and the spin rate on his breaking stuff there. People were wondering, oh, he's not using the spider tech anymore. And, uh, you, know, you know, now he's getting hit like that. Well, Cole definitely put, you know, all those rumors to bed last season by having a Cy Young type of season. Uh, so, again, if Cole just has a game like that where his stuff is down a little bit, I wouldn't put it on the worrisome. And, again, we've seen him pretty, you know, on his rehab starts in the minors in the first game against Baltimore, have a better fastball and get some big strikeouts there. So, again, this could have been just, a, you know, a bad start, a bad day. It could happen to anybody. It just happened in a big high profile situation as a subway series uh, against the Mets in City Field. And for the Mets, yeah, and like all baseball, it's not when you play a team, it, it's not you know the team you play, but it's when you play them. Now, if you're the Yankees and you're a Yankee fan, April, May, uh, maybe even early part of June, you'll be salivating uh, to get your hands on the Mets. The Mets were like down and out, they're way down in the NL East there. Uh, you know, Players are getting injured left and right, and it looks like you know fans yelling at Cohen, do something. He's not doing anything. Uh, fans are almost ready to give up on the season. And if, and just a couple of weeks just before the series against the Yankees, the Mets got hot, uh, winning 13 out of 21 games there. Again, being one of the hotter teams in baseball. Uh, so, you know, you're also catching the Mets at a time where they're hot, so you catch them at the wrong time versus maybe if Cole had to start against them, let's say Cole was healthy and start against them in May if Cole was around, then he probably blows them away in like eight innings of, you know, just two-run ball there. So, again, this is a bad situation with Cole there. Again, at this point, if there's only two starts and one of them was not bad, but again, as long as he didn't report any discomfort or pain or anything like that, I could just chalk it up to a bad start. It just happened to be against the Mets who... Again, at this time, at least at the time that start, we're one of the hotter teams in baseball. Uh, but it is good to have Cole back because you can see you know, a little some cracks in the Yankee pitching. And I kind of get it to, after this, you know, talking about the bullpen. Again, Yankee starting pitching, at least up to this, you know, very um, up to the most recent point. That, again, we're the best in baseball. I think that blows collective ERA. But you can see guys getting a little, you know, a little tired a little bit. You saw, you know, a, a Stroman, of course, struggled there up a little bit in Fenway. We saw Rendon, who overall has been good for the Yankees, but having a couple of rough starts himself. Um, Mainly also in Fenway there. So, you know, you can see some of these guys getting tired. Of course, Luis Hill, who's been phenomenal for the Yankees, uh, he got destroyed at home against Baltimore, but you know at some point he was due for a clunker. Uh, and, and Nestor overall has been good, but you look, at it, you look at his record there, doesn't look like the Nestor from two years ago. I mean, he's had some good starts there, and he's also had some bad luck just not getting much run support. So kind of up, there, up and down a little bit. But, again, just have Cole back. I think it just takes a little pressure off of those guys there who, have been again, they've held out in the fort the, the whole way there, but you see them maybe getting a little tired, a little fatigued. And, again, we're entering the hot month there, so the fresh arm of Cole, even if he has a bad start there, it is you know just good to see for the Yankees. Now, the previous YouTube episode, I kind of predicted that when it comes to the trade deadline, I think Cashman's number one goal is probably going to be on the bullpen. You know, I'm talking about bringing like a high profile name. But of course, you know, leading up to the whole way in the offseason up to now, Cashman's been doing these little tinkering moves, you know, uh, picking guys off the waiver wire, little kind of nine descript trades, you know, uh, 
sending some like a minor league invite and then promoting, giving a major league contract. So it's been a merry-go-round. And so far at this point, Yankees been held hold the fort together. Of course, you see the murders of Luke Weaver, and there's still been some positives there. And of course, we got Tommy Canely back, as mentioned in the previous episode. So bullpens come together, but still, it seems like the Yankees have dodged a bullet up to this point. You know, it not completely collapsing. It seems like it's put together by scotch tape and band aids. Uh, but you guys saw, 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 saw it crack a little bit. Uh, we saw up in Fenway, uh, Yankee bullpen got knocked around a little bit. Definitely got knocked around uh, when the Baltimore Orioles came to Yankee Stadium there. So the bullpen, which has been holding together pretty tight at this point, starting to crack a little bit. As I mentioned, some faults also with the starting rotation again. Them just showing a little bit of fatigue and you know them getting hit around a little bit. So you knew at some point Cash was going to make moves definitely by the trade deadline, but even did it sooner than that, um, juggling it around a little bit. So a couple of new faces there. So they signed Tim Hill, veteran, uh, veteran there, 34 years old, to a one-year deal. Uh, now, he was designated for assignment the week before that by the Chicago White Sox. Again, he's previously been with the San Diego um, Padres as well as he came up. Really got his name with the uh, Kansas City Royals, so he's been around a little bit. Now, the reason they DF- DFA'd him at the point, he, his ERA was 5.87, so almost pitching to a 6 ERA. So now you don't, you don't like that, uh, that point there. And had given up 41 hits in 23 innings there so getting hit around a lot but i guess the reason why cashman likes him of course he's a veteran uh, he's kind of kind of a bit of a funky side on motion there and at least up to that point of the season he had not allowed a home run but of course when he makes his debut for the yankees and pinstripes against the baltimore orioles what happens he serves up a home run but overall you can kind of see why they like him again if, if his stuff is on there he can be tricky against lefties uh and up to that point uh, he had a 65.6 percent uh, ground out ratio, so still getting a lot of ground balls. You know, he's getting hitting around a lot, and, that, and at the time, that was third in the league. Uh, and of course, first there's Clay Holmes, which you know, with his funky stuff, he gets a lot of ground balls as well. So, again, take a little bit of a risk against the guy's 34 years old. I mean, he was getting knocked around, but again, at least physically, looks like there's enough there. And because maybe want to get him in here, maybe somehow it resurrects his, his career a little bit with the Yankees. Um, now, uh, to make room for him. Uh, the Yankees, uh, they designate for assignment Victor, uh, Victor Gonzalez. Again, he came in the trade with the uh, beginning of the season with the Los Angeles Dodgers. And he's been okay up to the point. Again, he was supposed to be like one of the de facto replacements for Wandy Peralta, but he has not been like Wandy Peralta. I mean, Peralta was good for the Yankees. Uh, again, that's one that got away, but unfortunately he, go, he went to sign with the San Diego Padres. Uh, so they Vic, uh, Vic, uh, DFA'd uh, Victor Gonzalez, so he's gone. And also with the Yankees, uh, they had Phil Bick- Bickford, the former Met, who the Yankees gave a minor league contract to uh, during uh, spring training. He was cut by the Mets. The Yankees picked him up. They promoted him up to the major league level, so he comes up now. He's with the major league team. So he was with um, AAA uh, Scrant Wilkesbury, um, ERA uh, 2.93, so pitching to ERA under three. Uh, 35 strikeouts in 27 and two-thirds inning there, so averaging more of the strikeout per inning there, so you like that. And, of course, now with the Yankees uh, needing some room there, of course, who's always the guy, odd man out? Ron Marinaccio. Now, Marinaccio, to his fault, I mean, since he's come up, it's only been a brief period, hasn't been fantastic. But this is more of a situation that, as we know, Marinaccio, he's a shorthand reliever. The Yankees need long relief. Someone could go multiple innings. So to do that, to make room, uh, they called up Yoandres Gomez, uh, who's been up with the Yankees before, so we've seen, seen him. Uh, but he was starting games in AAA, 12 games started, and some pretty good numbers there. 3.13 ERA and 54 strikeouts in 46 innings there. So you have Victor Gonzalez out, um, and you have Tim Hill and Phil uh, Bigfoot in. And, of course, Marinaccio gets sent down to the minors yet again. We've seen that a million times. But it's not really, really solely because of performance, mainly because the Yankees need someone who could go out there multiple innings. And Gomez, of course, as a starter in AAA, he could come up here. And you saw it in the Braves in the series, went four innings there. So the Yankees needed someone to be a, a long re- reliever there. So the Yankees are all putting this together there, but I'm, you know, I'm sure within a week or two, you'll probably see some more moves. Maybe Bickford you know, collapses a little bit and they got to bring someone else up here. Um, but of course, the Yankees are trying to trying to cement that a good. You know, they've done this for years. Remember, the Yankees used to have like you know Green, and then they would go like Chapman or Br- uh, Britain like that. They always want to have like a seventh, eighth, ninth guys where you know you could bring out each. Year. The Yankees are still kind of looking for that right now. We, we know Holmes is going to be the ninth inning for the closer. Probably Luke Weaver will be the eighth inning guy. They probably want to still get like who's that guy for the seventh inning. And so when we get to the postseason, if let's just say the Yankees are in the postseason, what they should, you know who's going to come out of the bullpen seventh, eighth, ninth in. But I just think the Yankees are still trying to put that together. Slight improvements, but of course, as we know, you know, two weeks from now, I'm sure there'll be like three or four new faces in there. And it looks like the rest of the way in the AL East, it's going to be the Yankees and Baltimore Orioles, kind of you know at the top of the AL East there. But 
Record-wise, it always seems like the Yankees are going to be a game or two better than, than them. But, of course, overall, you got to say this is the, the Baltimore's division so far. I mean, they won the, the, the AL East title last season. And in this season, again, they're kind of neck and neck with the Yankees. But these two teams have faced each other so far seven times. And Baltimore won five of those seven games there. And if you look at the two games the Yankees win, a uh, one, one of those games, of course, in Camden Yards, it was a 2 nothing win, which is great. It's great. But you got a great start of Luis Heal. And it came off one swing of the bat. Uh, Oswaldo Cabrera, a two-run home run off of uh, Corbin Burns a ball that just barely went over the foul wall there. Other than that, could have been a situation where it could have gone 0-0 into extra innings, and we know what the Yankees so far this season been terrible for them in extra innings. It's been bad for them. It seems like every extra inning game, the Yankees end up losing there. So, Yankees are lucky to get that, that win. Other, other than that, the Yankees might be, you know, 1-6 against them this season there. So, not a good sign for the Yankees. Again, uh, also, you know, you have the fact that, you know, Cole was not there for most of it. I know he had made that one start there, but that was kind of, a, you know, a coming first game of the year there. So it's not like, you know, Cole was involved in the previous series so the parameters might be different if they these two teams go at each other later in the season but right now you have to say you know Baltimore is probably the better team now they got the Yankees got a little help because after Baltimore took two out of three against the Yankees in the Bronx Baltimore went on a five game losing streak so kind of at least kept the Yankees in the top there the AL East there so you kind of have to thank Houston and thank Cleveland as painful as that is uh, but head to head there Baltimore seems to have a little bit of the edge there uh, but again you know, I think some of the parameters will be different a little later in the season. Uh, of course, when Cole's kind of in full swing there, and maybe Cashman does a little more tweaking. Maybe you don't have DJ LeMayu around anymore. Maybe Ben Rice gets a little bit hot there. So some of the parameters could change. But right now, Baltimore seems to have a little bit of the edge. Now, the Yankees have had mainly three problems this season. I mean, Stan, as I mentioned before, corrected himself. It's just unfortunate right now he's on the IL. But the other three issues for the Yankees who have been hammering against this episode has been DJ LeMayu. Anthony Rizzo, of course, but who now is also on the aisle. And then, of course, last but not least, Gleyber Torres. I mean, the, but, but really, the, the three latter I mentioned seem to be holding down this lineup. Again, the Yankee, the top lineup, the first four, fantastic. But then after that, a lot of flat, non-hitting there. And, of course, Gleyber Torres really hitting rock bottom for the Yankees. I know once in a while, he'll get a hit or a home run like that, and he gives you hope back. But, again, batting in the low 200s, and he's about around like 213 right about now. And not only is he, again, bad hitting-wise, but again, making some blunders in the, in the field, which we know at some point he makes some great plays, but other times he's been making some blunders. But, of course, the highlight, the focus, uh, was on their first game at City Field there. Now, in the Baltimore series, both he tweaked his groin. Now, he came back negative that he didn't have to put him on the IL. But you can figure his hurt a little bit, so you can understand it a little bit. But there were two situations. One of them was a situation where the game was out of hand already, but it was a bases loaded situation that a draw in the, the infield. Uh, they were trying to stop the run there from, from scoring. Gets a ground ball right at him that he should have made. I mean, even in the announced booth on Paul O'Neill mentioned that he should have made that play. Ball gets right by him, a screamer, but still, it, it was a playable ball. And then later in the game, um, you know, when the Yankees kind of mounted a little bit, a bit of a comeback there, um, has a little ground ball out. Out, and again, not hustling at all, uh, barely even jogging there. And again, if he ran hard, balls it was like a soft ground. He possibly, maybe could have beaten it out, uh, but of course, it was thrown out there. And then, of course, after the game, um, Aaron Boone had addressed the situation and said they had to have a, a talk with him. Uh, but again, this is too bad, you know. A bad, bad fielding play, and then of course not hustling there. And we've seen that before with Gleyber Torres. Even a couple of seasons ago, there was a situation where he wasn't hustling, and Judge had to confront him in the dugout there. So this was another situation. Now, to Gleyber, I can understand. Yes, the you know a week before that maybe hurt his groin a little bit, even though he's not on the IL. He's still trying to tough it out there. And we've seen that even with Robinson Cano. Look, you know, I'm not going to kill myself if uh, you know if I don't got a shot to get first base there. I'd rather preserve my body and keep keep myself in the lineup. But Taking all these factors into mind there, uh, Gleyber Torres really got to be driving the Yankees nuts, and I can't see any way, any way he's with this team, you know, 2025 and moving forward here. You can't really trade the guy because he makes too much money, and I don't know who would actually want him. Uh, and you feel bad. He's not like a terrible guy. He's, you know, obviously, you know, I, even though the Yankees uh, – Traded, got him from the, the White Sox organization. He made his debut with the Yankees, so he's your guy, and you get to see him flourish. And was an all-star his first two years there. But, again, he's just really, really leaves you disappointed there. And, uh, you know, I don't know if Cashman's going to make a move for second base there. I mean, but, then, again, I don't know who would take Glaber and his money there. So, uh, you know, second base could be an improvement. So whether they ride the rest of the year out with him, it's a good possibility, and just let him walk, and I think they would. Uh, but, again, he's just hurting the Yankees in the lineup there because he's not producing the way he should. So that's the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and make sure you get the audio version podcast of the show wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Catch you next time.